Hello everybody, this is Dr. Novak again. Uh, I thought I would do a video on lighting. I've done videos on lighting, but this is an A-B comparison for you. So we're going to A-B two lights. We're going to A-B one light that costs $250 for the light only. And we're going to compare it to a light that costs $25. I know you're probably thinking right now, what? Well, what are you talking about? A $25 light you're going to compare to a Kessel $250 light? Yeah, we're going to do an A-B comparison. And I'm going to show you the comparison between a $250 light and a cheap light. So we have this Kessel right here, the Kessel Tuna Sun. It's an A160WE. It does not come with an arm, doesn't come with anything. It comes with the little clip and stuff to hang it. But after that, you have to now pay more to buy the arm and everything. Now you're talking at least about 300 bucks, and that would be on Amazon. It could be more depending on who sells it. But uh, So you're talking close to 300 bucks if you want to buy the arm and everything. But I'm going to leave that out. Let's just say the light itself is at least 250 plus dollars to buy this. Now, every, every every review I have seen of this light was of a person who got it for free. Kessel sent them a light. Like I said, if Kessel wants to send me some of their lights, I'll try them out. But uh, everyone who's done a review on these has got them for free and the funny thing is, they sell them, too. And one thing they've always said about the, this Kessel light, this one right here, uh, is how bright it is. Oh, it's so bright, and, it, and it's just so great, the color and everything else. But how would something like this in our aquariums compare to, let's say that I showed in one of my videos, a $25 light bulb? How would that $250 compare to this, a $25 light bulb? You would think, no way. No way can this outbeat a $250 light. But in this video, I'm going to show you that yes, a $25 light bulb outshines, it's brighter. You know, the thing that Kessel does, and which they don't tell you, which I've read in several articles and stuff that people have, or comments people have made, Kessel doesn't want to tell you the luminous output. They said, oh, it's equal to a 175 watt metal halide. That's bunk. Look up how many luminous output a 175-watt metal halide puts out. This does not put out a 175-watt metal halide. It, it just doesn't. I don't know what Kessel, what they're measuring this on, but a metal halide 175-watt, go to your local hardware store, your local Lowe's or whatever, and then you'll go into where the LED lights are, and you'll see these big light bulbs like this, big light bulbs, and they fit into a normal, uh, I think they just fit into a, a T25 medium base socket. They're about this big. They're as big as a metal halide, and uh, <clears throat> I think they go 150, 175, and 200 watt, these big bulbs, okay, and they tell you what the luminous output is because that's what we perceive as bright okay that's how the human eye looks at things uh, i'm not talking salt water now i'm talking fresh water salt water is different because they have to require a lot of blue and the human eye does not look at blue the same as it does your yellows greens reds we do not perceive blue and they have to do that because of their corals and things that they're using. Okay, I understand that. But when it comes to freshwater aquariums, we as hobbyists need to do several things. 
<coughs> excuse me, we needed one. We got to make sure the light is bright enough where we don't have to keep buying light fixtures in the future. Like I've talked about the Fluvos, where they just don't seem to be bright enough. But if you watch my video on how strip lights are made, and if a strip light is two feet long, and it claims to have 2,000 luminous output, that's only 1,000 per foot. So it's not as bright as you think it is. 1,000, that's not even a 100-watt light bulb. Okay, that's more like a 75-watt light bulb. So you can see where people have to maybe buy strip lights and buy more than one. And at the price they are, it gets kind of expensive. So one, we are looking for a light. We don't have to keep rebuying more lights to make our aquariums bright enough. We got to perceive it with the human eye, right? Two, we want it to be able to photosynthesize plants if we have them. If we don't have the plants, then we're not really worried about making sure it will photosynthesize plants, right? But it's nice to have a light that if you do put some plants in your aquarium, it can and will grow your plants and you'll see the purling of your plants and it will photosynthesize your plants. We definitely want a light for that. So if it's not bright enough, it's not going to do that. So we have to make sure we have some ultra, ultra bright light to do that. Uh, forget about PAR. Uh, people are constantly bringing up PAR. Nobody has a $300 PAR meter sitting at home to use it once and to pack it up and put it in the closet. Forget PAR because PAR is one of those things that people like to throw around, you know, Oh, what's the PAR number? We're not worried about PAR right now. We're just worried about how much luminous output a light has. The more you bombard a bar to tank with a luminous output, you will achieve any PAR you want, okay? That's it. Because people don't buy $300 PAR meters, okay? They don't do it. I don't have one. I'm not going to spend $300 on a meter I'm going to use once, twice in my lifetime, 300 bucks. I got better things to spend my $300 on than a PAR meter <laughs> I'm really not going to use. So it's, it's a nice little gadget if you have plenty of money or if you can borrow one. But I know like a lot of aquarium clubs, if they do have a PAR meter, that you have to sign off on it that if you break it, you got to fix it or replace it. And I don't know if I want to borrow a piece of equipment. And if it happens to, you know, crap out on me while I'm using it, I have to go out and buy them a brand new one after it was used when I got it. So that's something you have to think about. Most uh, of your clubs will require that. They're just not going to hand you a $300 meter and say, Oh, if it breaks, we'll eat it. No, you're going to have to replace it if it breaks. And there's always that probability. So I just go off of the old time way of luminous output. It's the easiest thing to do. Bombard your tank with the most luminous output you can. You're going to have plants grow. It's that very, very simple. The deeper your aquarium, the more luminous output you're going to need to make your plants grow at the very bottom. And I've proven this in several videos by using off-the-shelf LEDs for tanks that were at least 20, 24 inches deep, which is quite deep. Anything deeper now, like a 30-inch tank, they're hard to work with, get your hand in there. Most people will go with at least a 20 or 24-inch deep aquarium. And that's about it because otherwise they get too uncomfortable to work with if they're deeper. So I'm going to show you and let you decide what a T25 medium base light is. And I'm going to test it right on my uh, antique aquarium for you. Okay, here is our AB comparison. What you're looking at is the Kessel light. Look at the shading. Look at how bright it is. 
and this is the ultra bright $25 light now I'm going to put them side by side so you can kind of look at them and here they are side by side if you notice look closely first of all you can't see it very well but you can see look at the white background behind the ultra bright which is on your left hand side and look at the background to the shade on the right side with the Kessel light you notice a greenish tint to the shade greenish that and then the other one you don't notice that greenish tint this is the left side is more of a bright white light to the human eye and the other one is more of a greenish yellowish it looks taller one way to tell that one is brighter than the other look at the uh, breeding tube look at the shadow on the breeding tube the very front and notice the shadow is gone on the breeding tube that is on the left hand side and then you'll see that you see the shadowing because the light is dimmer Look at the piece of driftwood. You see where the shadows are gone on the piece of driftwood, but yet they exist on the Kessel light because it's a lot duller. <clears throat> Remember, you have to have a light that the human eye enjoys that uh, is perceived by us to be bright, but also bright enough for the lights to use what is in there for them to photosynthesize but you can just tell between the two tanks how one tank looks duller and the other tank looks brighter now of course people would argue that well that's because it's perceived by the human eye but plants this is a daylight they the one on the left is a daylight meaning it's 5000 K okay the one on the right varies between 6,000 to 9,000 K. So it is a uh, light that's supposed to meet all the criteria of what it's supposed to be uh, meeting as far as uh, the plants are concerned. However, I'm being honest with you, I have never, with this Kessel light, had the plants photosynthesize if I close the shade the plants will not photosynthesize i do not see any purling of the bubbles i add um co2 to the aquarium yet it doesn't exist it just is not enough light i did now with the asta 120 i saw it but not with this kessel so <clears throat> i just wanted to make this video i want to keep it short you see the a b comparison you decide Maybe you may think it doesn't make a difference. Uh, maybe you think I'm wrong, which is okay. But by looking at the two, and I'm looking at the aquarium right now as I'm making this video, it is brighter. And to be honest with you, I have the light on, and it's the plants are already starting to photosynthesize. They're already starting to pearl. Make, you know, with that light on, which is only a $25 light bulb. So anyhow, I just wanted to show you that sometimes when people do a review and they've been given a product, sometimes those reviews are going to be a little biased because they want to get more pro products. Uh, I'm not trying to step on the toes of anybody who owns a Kesso, who loves it. I'm sure I'm going to get comments that, well, I have a Kesso light and I love it and it's worth every penny that I paid for it fine great it, it's great because nobody nobody who owns a rolex watch wants to hear that you just bought a two or three hundred dollar watch that is very nice and is a lot more accurate than that rolex you just bought nobody wants to hear it if you understand what i mean the analogy i'm using so this is dr novak until next time uh Happy fish keeping and please subscribe to my channel.